In this video, I'm going to show you what I would consider to be the best coverage defense for the trips tight end formation in Madden 22. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cody. We do videos like this every single day that can help you become a better Madden player. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I would really encourage you to hit the sub button. It's free to do that. But I also want to let you know about our Patreon membership. It's a brand new month. And we've got some really good stuff in our Patreon. That's where I put all my defensive and offensive ebooks. I've got over 20 offensive and defensive ebooks. In addition to that, we also do um, exclusive tips, high level tips, deep tips. These are meant to be videos that really get into the weeds on this game and help you understand it at a really high level. And so if you want to get those, we post those in there every single week. If you want to get access to um, all of the material in the Patreon membership, it's only $10. So for just $10, you get access to all of our eBooks. And in addition to that, you also get access to all of our exclusive tips um, that we don't really share on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, again, I'm going to put a link to my membership in the description and it's only 10 bucks to sign up. I'd really encourage you to consider it. Uh, I think it's a really easy way that you can get better at this game. Now, from a coaching adjustments perspective, I'm in the 4-6 playbook. We're going to be uh, talking today about a coverage out of the 3-3-5 wide. What we want to do when we're defending trips is we want to put our auto alignment to man align. Then what we want to do is ball and air defense. You can do whatever. Really important option defense on conservative. And then I like to actually take off my zone drops. So as you can see here, I don't have any zone drops set. Really important. Okay, so nickel 335 wide. We're going to be going over a coverage defense today that I like out of the cover one robber coverage. And you just want to come out and cover four because you're going to be able to put linebacker or safeties at linebacker. It's going to help with your coverage uh, significantly. And then I'll show you how I like to bag this formation. So the first thing that I want to show you is a really easy way for you to be able to stop um, you know, any kind of basic run. I'm sorry, I forgot to grab inside zone. Let me throw that in the audibles here. Um, I'm just going to put it in here. So we don't really need curl flat. We have verticals. And then we'll come out in uh, everyone's favorite play, PA counter go. So first and foremost, how do I stop the run out of trips tied in? Really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to kind of stand. I like to shift my line to the left. You don't have to. The reason I like to is because I'm going to only send Clark and Gary at the quarterback, and I'm going to bluff blitz this outside defender, okay? And then we'll put some zones out of here. The reason I like to only send two is now I'm going to get isolation. I'm going to get two. This guy is going to be in a matchup against a guard and a tackle, and this guy is going to be in a matchup against a guard and a tackle. And then I should be able, if I just stand here for just a second, to shoot the inside zone really easily. Now, I can also shoot halfback base the same exact way. And um, just for fun, while I'm thinking about it, let me just show you how you can also shoot the halfback counter, which I don't know if you know this, but the halfback counter is a really good run uh, this year. So I'm just going to go to halfback counter. Obviously, QB power is a little different from New England. I don't have it in this playbook. Um, but anyways, let's just take a look. So, you know, again, I'm not going to be blitzing these two guys. This guy right here is probably going to go into a curl flat. Um, and then this guy is going to go into a bluff blitz. Really important. And then again, your users right here. Against the counter, the same basic shoot applies. You see that I do get blocked, but I'm able to get a lot of help um, in behind the play. Now, if I really, 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 really know that they're running counter and they're running counter like a lot, um, then what you can do is you can basically just shoot in and through the guard pulling. See that? And again, I missed it, but you see how I'm able to come in. So this little gap shoot right here to me is the best. And again, it really tees up your pass rush, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. Um, I've talked about it a little bit on my channel, but not a ton. But anyways, here's counter. You see, I can just run right through and blow it up. Okay, so that's the run. So I'm not going to spend a ton more time on that. Um, let me show you real quick. So let's say, let's let, let's show you the base pass rush. So let's say that I, so I want to blitz my user for sure. Okay, and then I also want to bluff blitz Smith and I want to zone out Scott. 
So I'm only going to send two people. But if you watch, you'll notice that my nose tackle is going to shed right up the middle pretty quick. See how it sheds quick? And that's because of the matchup. Now, what happens, for example, if they, po if they have a post up on their center? Well, it's typically not going to be very good for my one guy because he's oftentimes going to get double teamed. If I shift my line to this side and crash them out, now I have a little bit better of a chance. I have a little bit better of a chance that both of these guys, a post up is not going to block both of them. So now they have to have two post ups. Now, most people do have two post ups, but I'm just saying it's better for the run and it's also better for the pass because now what you're going to get with this is you're going to get two guys that have a chance to beat their guy as you can see and go in and shed the quarterback so really good little concept if you want to mess with that if you don't don't but i like it a little bit better i've had a little bit more success with this so that's kind of your basic setup from a pass rush perspective you're just going to shift your d-line to the trip side you're going to crash them out you're going to blitz your user and then i like to bluff blitz that lift of screen uh guy and then the other guy uh, Scott, you can do a couple different things with him. What I like to do uh, with this defense is I basically don't want to have to worry um, about the left side of the field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vert hook him. And then you can, you got a couple of different things that you can do uh, from this point. Okay. I like to go ahead and put the safety on the left side of the screen into an inside quarter. That's going to basically take the number three receiver out of the play. And now all I'm going to have to worry about is if the tight end goes across the field on, like, let's say, a post. And I'll show you. So if I don't use or anybody, you'll see this purple does eh, okay. Um, it can either be in a purple or a vert hook. It's up to you. And I can could, I could see justification for both. It really is up to you. It's, it's really not um, it's not relevant to me, honestly. Um, you could do either one. And different situations could call for that. So the purple is going to do a little bit better of a job at stopping this tight end post route. So you'll see he's going to run right into the purple. See that? Um, so, you know, you might just use the purple. But the other thing that I want to show you is... The relationship between a man-to-man -man assignment. So I'm going to man up Godwin and the inside quarter. Okay. So if I run this coverage right here, and then again, I just purple and and, and three red or uh, bluff blitz. This is pretty decent. I basically have to worry about the tight end. If the running, normally if you're playing as someone that runs trips, they don't really put the running back out a lot. So I'll just user him. If I can't use her the running back for whatever reason, uh, really important, if I can't use her the running back, take the linebacker that's in the purple and put him in coverage on the running back, or take this defender and put him into a curl flat to the running back side, and then man this guy up on the tight end. Those are like the two main things that I like to do once I see they start to like the running back. But normally I just kind of use her the running back because um, this coverage is really good as it is and you have a really good middle of the field coverage. Now, the other thing I wanna show you real quick is if they run this crosser to circle, you'll notice that this quarter is gonna play it really good and he's gonna kinda of bracket it and take it away, as you can see. But I also wanted to say something real quick about this quarter, inside quarter adjustment from this. This is a really good adjustment. I, I've been talking about this adjustment since I think September. Very good adjustment for trips. The bit major issue is you it's not exactly a one-to-one -one adjustment. What I mean by that is I can't necessarily say, okay, Scott, you cover the tight end. Alexander, you be the curl flat. And because I know King is just going to bag uh, Godwin. He will only bag him on deeper, like deeper, deeper, deeper routes, right? So let's say that I have a coverage... And it looks kind of like, you know, it looks kind of like this. I got the tight end, and then I've got um, Godwin on the quarter. So there's no man coverage on Godwin. If I run a slant route to Godwin, you see the quarter 
won't stop it. And now I got 20 yards, right? If I run a drag to Godwin, it ain't gonna stop it. If I run, if I motion, if I motion into two receivers, it won't stop it. So to me, it makes more sense to really just go ahead and say, you know what, we're gonna bracket him. And then now we've got, all we have to worry about, honestly, is the is the um, the right side. And, and, and you could make an argument that it makes a little bit more sense for the coverage to man Scott up on the tight end and man this guy up or uh, purple him. So now you have help on that right side for a slant or for whatever. And then the one thing I will say with that though is if you watch this tight end route, notice that that man coverage is kind of baity and he'll go guard it. So that's, those are kind of some simple things you can do against trips. If you want a little bit more of a simple, uh, a simplified version of this, don't crash, don't, don't move your line. Like just, just do like this. And then, you know, I would go something like this coverage right here. This, this is probably my favorite defense for trips because there's nothing they can hit you with on the, on the right side now. And the, the problem then is now all they really have is this tight end post, which you can just you can just take it, and you see it's also cross man by the way, so you know this is a pretty good little defense for trips tight end, at least the best that I've seen. Uh, when I face this myself, I like trips tight end a lot. Uh, this is this is a tough coverage to beat. So if you're looking for a coverage cover one robber with those adjustments, very effective. If you want to learn the rest of my trips tight end offense, or if you want to learn the rest of my three three five wide defense, or if you just want to get better at Madden. I would really encourage you to join our Patreon. It's only 10 bucks a month to sign up for that. And brand new month, so you can get all the content. You By joining, you instantly get everything. So you instantly get all of our eBooks, all of our tips, all that stuff. So if you want to sign up for the membership, there's a link down below. And uh, you can head on down there and check it out.